Hi guys, checking in with the next chapters of our book, A Boy and a Bear in a Boat. Uh, this chapter is called The Harriet. Why is your boat called Harriet? said the boy. He wasn't really all that interested, but at least it stopped them having to play I Spy anymore. The bear kept rowing and turned his head to look over his shoulder at the way they were going. Uh, I named her after a friend of mine, said the bear at the corner of his mouth. There's a Harriet in my class at school, said the boy. Harriet Bailey. Oh, yes, said the bear. Is she nice? No, said the boy. Not really. Oh, said the bear. At least not so nice that you'd name a boat after her. Oh, said the bear. What's your Harriet like then, said the boy. Well, I don't really know anymore. I haven't seen her for a while. The bear stopped rowing to scratch his nose. But she used to be all the things that I hoped the boat would be. Like what? said the boy. Well, said the bear, she was very strong and very reliable. He was looking up and away now into the distance and the past and smiling. And very buoyant he said. Then he grinned broadly directly at the boy and pulled on the oars once more. Then he started singing again, a little more loudly than before. The boy took a new look around the boat. His first thought was that it wasn't much of a compliment to have a battered little boat like this named after you, but on closer inspection he changed his mind. She was an old boat, clearly, but well looked after, loved even, Although the waters had washed and worn her timbers over many years, it was clear they had been freshly painted and with considerable care, and the metal fixings gleamed, even if some of them were held in place by as many as three different sizes of screws. There were signs of any number of repairs if you looked for them, but you really did have to look for them. They had been carried out with such patience and care that they were barely visible. It would be impressive work from a skilled carpenter, let alone a bear who could barely fold a map. She sounds very nice, said the boy, but the bear showed no sign of having heard him. He just kept smiling and rowing. Chapter 6, The Comet. Lunchtime came and went, but there wasn't much lunch involved. The boy watched the horizon and waited for land to appear. It didn't. Then he closed his eyes and counted to a hundred as slowly as he could, then opened them again. Still no sign. Then he closed his eyes and started to count to two hundred, got bored at a hundred and twenty-four and opened them again. Still nothing. He reached under his seat for the chocolate. But when he tugged at his bag, it didn't move. He tugged harder, but it still wouldn't budge. So he got off the seat and crouched down to take a look, a closer look. Some sort of booklet had got caught and crumpled up between the bag and the side of the boat and jammed it into place. He took hold of the bag with one hand and pulled it sideways to make a little space and then worked the booklet free with the other hand. It was a comic, brilliant. The boy loved comics. It wasn't one that he recognised and it was very badly creased, but that didn't matter. He laid it on the seat and did his best to flatten it out. Then he read it. Only he couldn't. What language is this? He said, flapping it about in frustration. He had only meant to say it to himself, but the bear looked up at him. Oh, that, said the bear. I'm not sure. Get all sorts on board in my line of work. But never been any good with languages. Nice young fella, though. The chap that left it behind. The bear looked up and sideways, remembering. Nervous type, but very pleasant. Big tipper, too. Very generous. Or else he didn't really understand our money properly. I'm not sure. Then he shook out the thoughtful crumples in his forehead and smiled broadly and began to sing again. 
back in his own happy world of rowing and paying the boy no attention at all. The boy flicked quickly through the comic, hoping that he might be able to make out some of the story from the pictures alone. But it was no good. It seemed to be just one episode of a longer story, so it didn't have a proper beginning or an ending. It was all just the part of the middle. There was no way of knowing what had gone on before or what would happen after. And actually, the boy didn't have much of a clue about what was going on now. It wasn't just that he didn't understand the words, although he did notice that ah was spelt the same way. The pictures all seemed foreign to him too. The drawings were weird, all angular and ugly, and a little bit scary, and the colours didn't fit inside the lines. He didn't like it at all, but he went through it a second time, just the same. After all, he had nothing better to do. It still didn't make much sense, but he did find a couple of bits quite exciting. Early on, a young girl, who seemed to be the heroine, escaped from the clutches of an evil villain with a scary hairdo and a big black coat. On the last page, she was facing seemingly certain death at the claws of a gigantic slimy monster with million teeth and so far as the boy could make out, supernaturally bad breath. Most of what came in between, though, remained a mystery to him. He gave up on it. It was stupid. But he was careful not to get it creased again when he put it away next to his bag. Tea time. The boy was doing nothing very much and had been for quite some time. He thought perhaps now he would do nothing at all for a while, just for a change. The bear had rode for all that time, and so presumably they had travelled quite a long way, even though you wouldn't know it from the view. The boy had spent a long time gazing at the sea. He had counted waves for a while, but lost interest after the first 400 or so. He was roused from his bored days by the bear suddenly freezing mid-stroke. His oars hung motionless above the water, a strange wide-eyed expression on his face as if something had just struck him. What is it? said the boy. It's four o'clock, said the bear. The boy had no way of knowing any different. And, he said, time for tea, said the bear. He stopped rowing and poured the oars part way into the boat. Then he stood, turned, leaned down and pulled out his suitcase and placed it on the middle seat. With dainty precision, he removed from the case a small gas stove, a box of matches, a small battered and blackened te- kettle, a china teapot and a cup and saucer. Then he filled the kettle with water from a large plastic bottle. Then he lit the stove. This was simply no matter, as the bear appeared to be quite simply afraid of fire. First he opened the box of matches, then he took out a match. Then he closed the box of matches. Then he put the matchbox down with the match on top of it next to the stove on the seat. Then his face screwed up in concentration. He held the blue canister of the stove steady with one paw at arm's length while he grasped the knob to turn the gas with the other. He was panting just a little, the boy noticed, and very slightly quivering. Then he turned the knob the tiniest fraction of a turn grabbed quickly for the match and the matchbox, struck the match and held the flame to the burner. His face turned away, his free paw shielding his face. The gas ignited pathetically into the tiniest blue flame. The bear let out a deep breath. Then he placed the kettle onto the stove and turned up the gas so that the flame grew 
with a small roar. There was a whistle shaped like a bird at the end of the kettle's spout that sang shrilly when the water boiled, but not for long as the bear was watching closely and quickly turned the gas off. He used a little water to warm the teapot, swirling it around and then discarded it into the sea. Then he heaped three teaspoons of leaf tea from a scratched and rusty tin, filled the pot from the kettle, replaced the lid and lovingly clad the pot in a pink woolly tea cosy with a pom-pom on the top. Then he reached beneath the seat and brought out a strangely shaped black case. He opened it up and took out something that looked at once familiar and odd to the boy. What's wrong with your guitar? said the boy. Did it get wet and shrink? The burn, the bur bird, the bear gave him a stern look. It's not a guitar, he said. It's a ukulele. I timed my tea with a song. He plucked at the strings, adjusted the tuning. Then he began to play and sing. When you are out to sea, you'll have a friend in me. We'll have a cup of tea and keep going. The weather may be poor, with rain and wind and more. What fun we just adore when it is snowing. You fear that you'll be drowned, the shark fins circle round. So watch, we're homeward bound and we're not slowing. And if the current's strong and the dark cold night is long, who cares, we'll sing our song and just keep rowing. Mostly the bear strummed a very simple accompaniment to his singing. But between the final two verses, he played quite a long, complicated instrumental section. This wasn't something that he found easy judging by the faces he pulled. He was obviously concentrating very hard and the boy had to concentrate quite hard not to laugh. When it was over, the bear put the ukulele away, removed the tea cosy and poured the tea into his teacup. Would you like some? He said to the boy. No, thanks, said the boy. He had never been able to see the point of tea. Even if you added loads of sugar, it was still boring. Then the bear lifted lifted the delicate china cup to his mouth, blew gently over the surface of its steaming contents and took a tiny sip. Ah, sighed the bear. And he smiled and stared into space, wearing an expression of deep contentment that he retained for the next quarter of an hour as he consumed one small and lively appreciated sip at a time. The rest of the contents of the cup. When he was done, he used the last drop of water from the kettle to rinse out his cup, emptied out the teapot into the sea and put everything neatly away and took up his oars again, beaming with happiness. The boy watched him and tried to smile, uh, tried to smile himself. He just about managed it, but it was a bit of an effort. Well, I hope you enjoyed those chapters and my singing. Stay tuned for the next few chapters. <laughs>